my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us spend a moment in silent meditation as we prepare to worship our Lord. Please stand. We meet today in the presence of God, whose love is freedom, whose touch is healing, whose voice is calm. We meet not in our own strength, but in the knowledge that God's spirit abides within us. In our worship today, in our daily lives, when we depart from this place, the blessing received is shared in the hope that others might be drawn to the God we serve. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 388.
Good morning. Good morning. And I welcome you to St. Mary's Episcopal Church on this glorious feast day of Pentecost. Our service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. And I joyfully greet you by saying, Alleluia! Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song of praise is in your insert, hymn number 36, Praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, 
and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, and I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show my portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 104, found in your insert or in your Book of Common Prayer on page 736. We will read responsively, breaking at the half verse. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He and I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them to everyone. 
To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the sermon of spirits. To another, varieties, kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For the one spirit we were baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you, receive, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you this morning in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. And first and foremost, I bid you a most blessed Pentecost. Happy Pentecost. Happy Pentecost. You all know this is the birthday of the church, right? This is our happy birthday as the Church of Christ. Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down upon the apostles' disciples, and all the crowd to fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Aren't live events wonderful? Being in the midst of something. You ever go to like a Super Bowl or a national championship game or maybe a concert of someone you really like? Isn't it so much better being there live than 
trying to watch it on TV or just because of the energy, right? You're surrounded by 60,000 other people who are all screaming and yelling and excited and you just, you feel that energy kind of percolate through you. It makes those kind of events really special. It makes them where they become memories in our life, right? I remember the Super Bowl game I was at or the World Series game I was at or seeing Jimmy Buffett in concert a bajillion times for me. <laughs> but we remember those events because of that activity, just that energy that was there and the, the way that it lifted, it up, lifted us up. And so I've always kind of wondered why Pentecost doesn't get its due in the church. We all, you know, make all of the bells and whistles for Christmas, as we should. And Easter, those two big days, we all go all out and we do all this festival thing, but Pentecost is kind of Pentecost. <laughs> but what an amazing day it was. What an event to see. What a day to be part of. The clouds opening and the voice coming down from heaven like a wind. The Holy Spirit like flames of, of tongues of flame coming down upon the disciples and apostles and all these people speaking in tongues in different languages and people could actually understand them. What a wild event to have been part of. Could you imagine trying to tell that to someone else later? Yeah, right. How drunk were you? <laughs> Seeing things like that. In fact, we hear that in our reading, don't we? You guys must be drunk on wine because it was such an unbelievable day. And it is such a great day for us because it is how this all began. It is how the church began. It was the first steps of beginning the mission of Christ to all of his followers. It was when we received that power of the Holy Spirit that came down from heaven. And we take heart in that in such a that it is such a great day because first of all, we find out that the church was created by God. What do we hear at the very beginning of our first lesson today? The wind came down as from heaven. God was there. God was making this all happen. They didn't just show up in this place and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit came down. God was at work. The church of Jesus Christ is God's dream, God's desire, God's work. He created this. This is part of his creation just as well as the Grand Canyon and Yosemite National Park. The church was also created by God to show his beauty and majesty and love. But we don't do a very good job lately of getting the word out about church, do we? You know, the church was created to spread God's word. And all too often it seems like we spread man's word or the current culture's word or things that are on our personal mind. And we don't preach God. We don't preach his law. We don't preach Jesus Christ and the gospel. We get away from the real truth of what God is calling us to do. Maybe that's a reminder for us this Pentecost to get back to truly preaching God in the church and telling people about the story. Because that's exactly why God came down, so that we could communicate the story. Not just the story of this day, but the story of a Savior who came to live among us, who died on the cross for our sins, gave his life for us, that we might have forgiveness and salvation, and then rose again on the third day to give us the opportunity of everlasting life. That's the story that needs to be told. That's the story that God wants us to communicate. That's why he gives us the Holy Spirit. So that we have not just the power, but the words to tell that story. The disciples always used to ask Jesus, how will we know what to say? And what does Jesus tell them? Don't worry about it. When the time comes, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. I'm living proof of that every Sunday. <laughs> Boy, the Holy Spirit does a job on me sometimes, okay? But it is true. When the time comes, the Holy Spirit 
gives us the power, gives us the words of what it is we're going to say. And that makes all of us powerful. It makes all of us powerful oracles of the story of Jesus Christ, of the story of God's love for us. So we shouldn't back away from telling the story. It's a story that needs to be told, particularly in this day and age, and particularly in our culture that is so upside down and backwards right now. This is the story that people need to hear. God so loved the world that he sent his only son. That's the story. That's the story we need to tell to remind people that even in the midst of all the darkness we see today, God is still we're with us and God still loves us and cares for us. Especially those of us who turn our face to him and hear his word. We get it more strongly. And finally, just as Jesus did in his, his ministry, you know, he never sent the disciples out alone, did he? Whenever the disciples went to a task, what did they do? Two by two. He always sent them in pairs because he knew there was strength in numbers. He knew there was strength in having someone there to be with you, to help you out on your task. And so the Holy Spirit comes down on this meeting of hundreds of people because the church is all about community. It's all about all of us coming together with a shared experience. We've probably all had our own Pentecost experience. Our own time that we've felt deeply the power of the Holy Spirit moving in us. Or we've heard the voice of God in a special way. That's the same thing for us. We live it out just like those disciples 2,000 years ago. We get to be part of it. We are part of it. We are part of the community and body of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful thing that is. But we shy too, too away from it way too often. We don't tell the story about how Jesus Christ has worked in our life so that others might feel the same thing so that others might open themselves to the power of the Holy Spirit and feel the same thing. Jesus has always wanted us to be in community. He never did anything alone. It was always in groups of people. Because he knows that some days I might be happy, but somebody else might be going through the darkest day of their life. And they need the happy person there to help lift them up. Because in three months' time, I might be the person going through the darkest day in my life. And I'd want someone happy here to lift me up and give me a hug. And tell me, God loves you. Jesus loves you. It's going to be all right. That's what community does. That's what church is. It's not these walls. It's us. It's this group here assembled. No matter where we are assembled, we are a community of faith. We could be outside at the Lock Evans property and it wouldn't matter. We'd still do church because church is about us and our prayer of God and our prayer to Jesus Christ and the oncoming of the Holy Spirit. It changes us. It moves us. It gives us a new drive to do something. When that Holy Spirit comes down on us, we want to do new things. We want to spread that word. And we need to live into that. Instead of turning it down, we need to turn it up full bore. We need to let that flame rise within us so that we can spread the story, so we can tell the story and bring others into our community. Do you ever want to bring people into your church? Show them what a believer you are in your church. People go where there's a strong spirit. People go where there are strong believers because they know that something's happening there. But we're all emissaries that have to tell the story. We have to tell the people that we know what we find here, what we feel here, the love we have for each other. 
And then those outside will say, I'd like some of that. I might go sit down and see what that's all about. That's how we bring folks in. So that's our call. That's our mission. Is to continue to spread the church. To continue to spread the good news. But all too often our message gets really interrupted. It gets messed up because instead of talking about the things we should talk about, instead of talking about the love of God, instead of talking about sin and death, instead of talking about the grace of Jesus Christ and love and sacrifice, we end up getting together and complaining about liturgy and prayer book and how we do the things we do and which candle do we light first and all of these irrelevant things that have nothing really to do with church, have nothing to do with the story that the Spirit wants us to tell. It's no wonder sometimes as Episcopalians, we, when we talk, people say, you guys sound like you're drunk on wine. You're telling me the story of Jesus Christ and it's all about what you voted on in general convention and this rule and that rule. That's not the story. You know the story. You live the story. That's why you're here in these pews. You felt the Holy Spirit within you. You've lived out the grace of Jesus Christ. You crave that forgiveness. You crave that repentance to return to him. That's the story that we tell. But to have the power to do it, to get the words, we have to open ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We have to open our hearts and call the Holy Spirit in. Holy Spirit, come to me. Holy Spirit, fall on me. Vine Sancte Spiritus in the Latin. Come, Holy Spirit. It's a lovely taze if you've never sung that. The Vine Sancte Spiritus. It's a calling of the Holy Spirit to be within us. And we have to do that to get the Holy Spirit to come down and be in our hearts. Then we have the power. We have the power to live our lives as we are supposed to. Closer to God. Closer to the teachings of Jesus Christ. And we have the power and the words to tell people that story. So today, on this day, when 2,000 years ago, the apostles of Christ opened their hearts and were filled with the Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ promised them. As you leave here today, open your heart and let the Holy Spirit come to you. Let the Holy Spirit come within you to give you that power to give you that courage, to give you those words to make a difference and continue to grow the church, continue to grow the body of Christ. That's the mission that Jesus set up 2,000 years ago, and that mission hasn't changed one bit in the last 2,000 years. It is still our mission as Christians today to tell the story and to build the church but we have to have the power of the Holy Spirit in order to do it. And that's why we need to open our hearts and we need to say, come Holy Spirit and fill the hearts of your faithful that we might know the power of your love. Come Holy Spirit. Please stand as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people for Pentecost can be found in your bulletin. Let us kneel before God as we lift our voices to him in prayer. The Spirit of God unites us as a people and enables us to pray and intercede for the needs of others. As we gather today in God's love, we offer our prayers and thanksgiving to the Father for the sake of the Son and through the Holy Spirit. Mighty God, breath your power into all the activities of your holy and apostolic church around the world. Empower all those who minister to us with the gifts that your Holy Spirit makes available. Give them wisdom in their decision making and the ability to have a deep understanding of the way that actions have taken our accordings with your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, help us to be constantly aware of the world's needs and problems. Give the leaders of this nation and the world the courage to oppose sin and triumph, that there may be a greater unity among nations seeking to halt the threat of war and terrorism, and that the common good of all humanity is served by their decisions and actions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for the gift of hospita hospitality and all of the opportunities that we have to share food and fellowship with our families, friends, and neighbors. We pray especially for all people who suffer from danger, fear, famine, homelessness, and turmoil. We long to be instruments of your love in creating peace in the world. Let us not be timid to speak and act accordingly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, your Holy Spirit is embodied in all created. We pray for the natural environment we cherish, for all the animals, the earth, the air, forests, oceans, rivers, and for those who are entrusted with the care and policies for the fragile balance, as well as increased awareness of our part in speaking boldly for respect of your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for the gift of healing to restore those who are sick, injured, or suffering. We especially raise before you now those who have asked for healing, prayer for themselves or a loved one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave to all of us the wonderful gifts of eternal life. Though we mourn their passing, we remember before you those who have recently died and those long past but still missed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, as we go out into the world, we pray that the Pentecost may bring to our church community a renewed sense of unity with all Christians around the world. May we use the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us to spread the good news and live the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Gracious God, I also lift up to you this day St. Mary's Episcopal Church and her people, beseeching you to guide, guard, and protect us and give us your grace and blessing as we do your ministry in this place. We lift up to you all of those on our parish prayer list, those who are preparing for or recovering from surgeries and procedures, those with need of ongoing prayer and healing, and those with urgent need this day, most especially Jay Savadikian, Jerry Rice, Peggy Fetch, John Avel, Fred Wells, Cecil McGavern, Lee Conley, John Finnerty, Butch Lalumier, Gail Mellon, Robert and Phyllis Worth, Larry Schwartz, Jock Waitman, Betty and Leon Milton, Nancy Meach, Nancy Sparks, Ken White, Deacon Ben Krillman, Lisa Kusky, Pat Goltry, Sherry Had, Chad Roberts, B.J. McCabe, Kelly Teets, Pat and Ray Gertman, Mark McNary, George Belts, Seth Goody, Carl Kafka, Henry Vogler, Ted Benz, Wendy, and Gene Wise. Are there others to be named? Lord, in your mercy. Hear Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now using the confessional on page 360 of the Book of Common Prayer, let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet each other with the sign of peace. Hugs and kisses are permissible. Please be seated. Well, good morning, and I welcome you all this Pentecost Sunday to St. Mary's. You don't just get fire in the sermon. We also got fire going over at Tano Hall to cook burgers and dogs. So um, immediately after the service today, we invite you to come over to Tano Hall. Uh, if you don't have tickets yet, they're still available. You can still buy a ticket for the picnic, but come on over and join us for a little fellowship and a little friendship as we have a little Sunday afternoon picnic on this Pentecost and celebrate 
community and our time together and our love for one another. Uh, just some things to uh, remind you of, August 13th, put on your calendar. That is our bishop's visit. Um, our Pentecost picnic, of course, is today, right over there. Um, coffee hour, uh, we have some open spaces for the coming months because it's summertime. So if you've ever wanted to do coffee hour, it's a great time to sign up. Uh, the sign-up sheets are in Freeman Hall. And it doesn't have to be a big to-do. It can be very simple and very basic. It's really just a little something to nibble on while we sit down and talk to each other and share our common lives together. So we invite you uh, to do that. As always, we have birthdays and anniversaries. Celebrating birthdays this week are Jack Cook, George Belts, Nancy Meach, India Alfonso, Cheryl Yeba, Daryl Bozone, and Seth Waitman. I did Cheryl last week because she was traveling. Yeah. Still, yeah. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all the days of our lives, all of the days that we get to walk in your light and love. We thank you especially for those milestone days, our birthdays, that we can stop and reflect on our life with you and with each other. Gracious God, I lift up to you this, your servant Nancy, and for all of those who celebrate birthdays this week. I ask you to be with them on their special day and make it a day full of your grace and blessing as they find fun ways to celebrate with friends and family and those that they love. And I just lift them all up to you for your continued guidance, care, and protection. And that they may continue to walk with you and walk in your light all the days that you have given them. And we ask this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And happy birthday. And we have three anniversaries. Uh, the Reverend Rick and Ann Fellows, John and Leslie Ovel, and Reverend Gordon and Belle Thompson who we know are up in Canada, and we blessed them before they left back in April, I believe. But this is their 50th anniversary for Gordon and Bell, so good deal, good deal. Yeah, really. There you go. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you give us spouses, partners, those that we share our lives with, those that we can lean into in our time of need and lean into us in theirs so that Neither of us should fall. Gracious God, I lift up to you all of those who are celebrating anniversaries this week, especially Rick and Ann and all of those who have been blessed before, and we just ask you to be with them on this special day. Gracious God, let it be full of your grace and blessing, and just guide, guard, and protect them in all of their years that they have together with you, and we just ask you to, to be upon them and let their day just be full of love and laughter, and we lift them up to you in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And happy anniversary. And do I have any folks uh, that need prayers for healing, for procedures and whatnot? Nope. How about for travel? Good. We're all here to stay. Oh, travel. And where are we traveling to? Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. Okay. That's a whole lot different than Key West. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shortly. Okay. Very good. Well, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this big, wide, wonderful world that you've created for us and all the beauty and majesty that we see through it. And we thank you for the freedom and the opportunity to travel across this world and to see your, your beauty. And we just ask you to bless this family as they travel to, to Ohio. Gracious God, just be with them. Guide, guard, and protect them however they might travel on their trip, by air, by, by rail, by car, whatever it may be. And just continue to put your protective bubble over them and guide and protect them. And gracious God, I ask you to be present with all of their time together that they spend as a family while they're, while they're traveling. And be in the midst of them so that they can feel your love and blessing. And most importantly, we just ask you to let them come back to us safely. May you make their pathways straight. Their obstacles few and their delays short. And gracious God, we just lift them up to you for all your care and protection. In the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all. On the road. I feel the same way about Dayton. <laughs> and now Mimi Cass Clark has something to say for the daughters. Your turn.
we want everyone to be aware that next Sunday we are installing uh, a new class of daughters. What's the number, Nancy? Five? Four. Excuse me, four. We have one that is um, in the hospital, so it'll have to be done at a later time. Um, that's Barbara Barber, for any of you who are not aware. She's in um, rehab. rehab right now. So um, we will, any of you ladies who are interested and have a calling, or you think you might, we will start another class oh, for the fall, I imagine. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think. So we are a group that is service, prayer, and evangelism. And we don't mean go stand on the corner and hold your Bible and scream. That isn't our style. Um, but you do have to, you know, open your mouth occasionally and pray. Yes, but we pray a lot. And um, the blue slips that are in the uh, pews, and I know I'm remiss. I, I see a couple places I got to stick them in. Um, are private. They are just with the daughters. They're not going to appear on the prayer list. Uh, that Father reads or that is published. Um, but you do get prayed. The individuals will get prayed for daily by all of the daughters. And it is um, a very worthwhile and beneficial thing. And I would like some of you to think about it because it is uh, very fulfilling. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. And Nancy, what are we up to now? 20 after this installation? 22. Okay, when I first came here in 2020, we had seven, or six, or seven, yeah. So in three years, we've grown from six to seven to 22 in the order of the Daughters of the King. So that's been amazing growth and an amazing multitude of the people who are praying for all of us in this church, not only lay folks, but clergy as well, that we might be protected. Um, so uh, it's a very good organization, and I certainly uh, would you know, ask you to consider being a daughter uh, if you're a woman and being a part of that organization. So, But this is the time of the service that I say, if this is your first time at St. Mary's, if you are here every now and again or if you are here week by week, my brothers and sisters, welcome. You are home. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Hey, a quick little history lesson for you before we start that. Um, where'd the Paul go? This is called a Paul. And in the early church, the whole reason they used it in the church was to cover the wine because bugs were attracted to the sweet wine. <laughs> so, we've not had much of a need of it lately, but um, today <laughs> we might just. Please stand. <laughs> This morning we'll be celebrating Eucharistic Prayer D on page 372, Eucharistic Prayer D. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us, to the Lord our God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offered you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill his purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, 
his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took the bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your name. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, and with all the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us.
for the Leroy, the body of Christ, the Lord of heaven. My sister Linda, the body of Christ, the Lord of heaven. My sister Kathy, the body of Christ, the Lord of heaven. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come you who have faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. And if I might ask, after the choir gets communion, if we could let our chefs come forward and take communion so they can go back to their work and make sure our stuff is cooked, that would be good. Sister Danielle, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My sister Freda, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My sister Jean, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My sister Vicky, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My brother Ken, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My sister Norma, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My brother Ken, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My sister Susie, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My brother Barry, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. <coughs> My brother Bob, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My sister Melinda, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My sister Laura, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
sharing the body of Christ with one another. My brother Milton, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My sister Kathy, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My sister Nancy, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My brother Chick, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Our post-communion prayer can be found on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And before my final blessing, I did have one prayer that I left off this morning. Um, our dear brother Al Heiler passed away this weekend, and I ask you to hold um, his wife and his family up in your prayers. Um, he had been fighting a long battle with cancer, and so I ask you to be with him and his family, pray for his soul, pray for them. Thank you. Almighty and gracious God, over 2,000 years ago, you sent your Holy Spirit among your people to give them the mission of communicating your word to the world and to building a community that is the church. Be upon us this day that we might continue to be that community and continue to spread that word. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen.
My brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.